When we're considering approaches to working with dancers and performing artists, I think it's really important to take the time to understand their own unique environment. Uh, the literature right now is showing that severe anxiety and severe depression disorders in performing artists occur at up to double the national average, and also that up to 83% of elite dancers have suffered from either a diagnosed or an undiagnosed eating disorder at some point during their life. Uh, we're also seeing PTSD kind of creeping in and becoming more and more prevalent in the research, so I think it becomes really vital that as we're approaching this field, to work as either a consultant or a director, a coach, teacher, etc. Uh, it's important that we take time to explore why this might be the case. I think an interesting question comes up a lot in the literature regarding whether performing arts as a discipline includes a lot of environmental factors that contribute to the increased rates of mental health disorder or whether performing arts itself maybe attracts individuals with a predisposition. Um, I think it's important to explore both of those possibilities and understand how they both could impact an individual as we're approaching them in, uh, in a client relationship. Looking at the environmental concerns within performing arts, first and foremost, there's a massive lack of education, awareness, and resources surrounding mental health in that field. Teaching and directing orientation tends to take on a really negative focus. Um, it's very easy to watch a three minute number or even a two hour performance and only key into the things that are going wrong. And so feedback tends to be really, really centered on what is wrong without a lot of positive praise. Instruction also tends to be really outcome focused. We see a lot of directors or teachers asking for a particular outcome and then stepping back and letting the performer try to figure it out. And that can create a really vague and sometimes stressful environment to kind of navigate through. Defining success is really blurry in performing arts. We don't have the black and white win or loss that traditional sport comes with inherently. And we know how damaging that can be. But as you kind of step back and even remove that, Success is so subjective in performing arts. The performer tends to be their own harshest critic in that perfectionistic environment. Negative self-talk and unrealistic self-expectations are huge. Fear of failure in a lot of different ways is, is really, really prevalent in performing arts. There's also a culture within performing arts that really reminds performers, dancers, musicians, everybody, how replaceable they are. It's a little bit difficult to look at how the system might attract individuals with a predisposition to mental illness, but I think it's really interesting to look at how the system might perpetuate the involvement of someone suffering from one of the mental health disorders we mentioned before. How could someone who has severe anxiety or depression put themselves out on stage and subject themselves to that? But if you can kind of take a step back, it becomes easy to see this individual who is in an environment full of negativity and full of criticism, wanting to go out on stage where they receive applause and they receive laughter. And there's immense amounts of validation for that person once they are up on stage. You also, when you're on stage, can kind of take on an alternate persona. And this is something that a lot of performing artists will talk about, the ability to get out on stage and not be themselves and escape from those negative aspects of the self. And these things really create a strong drive to get back out into the performance environment. And you'll tend to see performers sort of put their head down and fight through whatever obstacles they have to get through. Um, whether it's a body image change that's required or uh, enduring a really negative or toxic environment in rehearsal space. Before working in any context with individuals in the performing arts, I think it's really important to take time to know your population and to get to know their specific performance stressors as well as specific risk factors within each discipline. Normalizing and promoting help-seeking behaviors and various feelings in performing arts I think is really, really critical. Because performance psychology is not commonplace in this field, if someone has reached out to you as a consultant, there has been a long process very likely to get to that point. And so anything that you can do to sort of praise that process and help um, that person kind of get away from whatever behavior pattern or whatever negative patterns they're experiencing is really, really critical. Helping to create resilience and protective factors for each individual is very important because 
for any performing artist, even if they're not in a difficult or toxic situation at the moment. If they stay in the field, they will likely encounter that at some stage. Uh, and I believe one of the most important things we can do is to make sure we're educating and creating resources specifically for the top down in performing arts. So aiming at directors, coaches, teachers, um, people that are working with performing artists so that they can gain more information and insight into how their interactions impact those around them.